Hey everyone, Dr. Vince here, and welcome to this brief but very um, important training on um, uh, what I call the transition. And this is part of my perfect workshop system, and it's primarily for doctors who are going to uh, utilize like dinner talks, dinner seminars, those types of things, even webinars. Um, that, uh, you know, to generate new patients for their practice, usually in cash-based care plans, whether it's decompression, stem cell, neuropathy, etc. But the, the transition is a really um, kind of a, a little-known um, uh, part of the entire talk, but it's super important. And if we look at, well, you know, what is the structure of a great talk? We have our content, uh, we have our Q&A, we have our transition, and then we have our close. So the content, obviously, is where we're going to talk about uh, what we do and why it's so great. Then we do our question and answer, right? So that we can, um, uh, you know, answer all their questions, overcome any objections that may be lingering in their head. You know, a confused mind will nine times out of 10 say no, right? So they're not gonna move forward. They're not gonna make an appointment. They're not gonna do anything if, if they are confused and that um, confusion is not resolved, right? So then once that's done with the Q&A, that's when we have the transition. Now we have the close, when we're going to actually ask for an appointment, and that should be, you know, um, thought out and and even written out and and rehearsed so that you feel very comfortable there. Because the whole point of this is that, you know, um, typically doctors when they're in public speaking mode, they're very good with the content. They can answer all the questions, um, but when it gets time to ask for a paid appointment, right? So for really uh, asking for someone to make a commitment. Um, that's where things not necessarily go off the rails, but they they um, kind of lose the conviction, the confidence, the the calmness that they may have had prior, and then uh, that is reflected back to them um, from the audience, right? So we need to we need to stay in confidence mode. We need to um, um, keep our message consistent in our tone, all that type of stuff, um, and so the transition is rarely paid attention to, um, and it can really be a lifesaver. I, I kind of like liken this to a professional pitcher, right? So um, pitchers typically, and I'm not a massive baseball fan, but um, pitchers typically have a pitch, right? That they're just, that's their go-to. Like if all, if everything else is, is going sideways and they can't, uh, you know, um, they're just coming kind of on an off night or uh, facing someone really tough, they'll kind of, they'll have this go-to pitch and maybe the curveball, whatever it is. And uh, this is kind of your go-to in a sense that um, it's, it's going to be what you utilize um, prior to going into your clothes, and it's and it's a um, it's something that you can always use. It's it's like step by step, so you just know, hey, I'm going to do my um, content, I'm going to answer their questions, I'm going to do my transition, and then I'm going into my clothes. And so it's a natural segue, and it helps the audience as well. So it can be kind of a lifesaver for you. Um, if it's done incorrectly, it can be a deal breaker, right? Because if you kind of stumble and bumble your way into the close, not only will you <laughs> be going into uh, in there into that section, which is so, so important and, and obviously not included in this particular training, but um, uh, you're going into probably one of the most important parts of the talk um, haphazardly, right? We don't want to go into our close haphazardly. We want to go into it smoothly and seamlessly. So um, how to start? Well, we want to change um, our tone, our pace, so that it gives a natural transition that people just instinctively know, okay, we're making a shift, okay? And so you may have been, you know, very upbeat and very, very excited talking about your content and answering questions and, um, you know, all that type of stuff. But then you want to kind of, you know, bring it down. <laughs> so kind of, um, if your tone is up, then you want to kind of bring the tone down. If your pace is fast, you want to slow it down a little bit. And, you know, what I recommend is something very simple. You just say, so look, let, let me ask you a question. I mean, this is, this has been some really great information that we've discussed tonight, right? You know, we've talked about how disc problems, they don't, they don't mean automatic surgery. I mean, uh, we talked about how there's a lot of solutions out there that, really are not the answers that you're looking for. Uh, and finally, we talked about how spinal decompression has literally changed the lives of thousands of patients. And that's it. 
that's the end of your transition. And then you go into your close. Again, we're not going to talk about the close right now, but, um, but that's your transition. It's like 30 seconds, but it's so simple. Um, and it just, it's like, you know, it just sets you up, right? And the, and the, the question thing is perfect because it's like, hey, so let me ask you a question. This has been some pretty cool information that we talked about tonight, right? And nod your head, right? And then look around. Who's nodding their head as well? You know, you want to start to see, okay, who's engaged? Who's, and not everyone will do it, but if, if you've given a good talk um, and everything else has been done correctly, most of the people, the majority, 75%, they'll be nodding their head with you, right? Because, because it's true. You have given them great information. You know, there's a, there's that aspect of reciprocity where, you know, you, you've, um, given them a good meal. Uh, you've made a nice evening out of it. Maybe you had some giveaways. Maybe you, um, you know, um, maybe it was funny. Maybe you were, um, you know, uh, you know, you have put on, you know, somewhat of a show and, um, uh, and you want to now, um, kind of lead into the next section where we're going to ask them to sign up if they if it seems to make sense for them. Um, but we want to do it smoothly. And, um, and then this section here where we talked about this, there's an old adage with public speaking. It says like, um, you know, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them. <laughs> so here, this is kind of, we're telling them what we told them. And so we're recapping the whole thing very uh, succinctly, right? Well, we talked about disc problems and how they don't mean automatic surgery. And we talked a lot about a lot of the options that are out there. This should actually say options, not solutions, um, that are really not the answers that you're looking for. And then finally, we talked about, you know, how spinal decompression, you know, how you may not have even heard of it before, but it's changing thousands of lives. So, and then that's it. Um, and then, you know, you go in your clothes. So, hey, how would you like if, you know, I helped you step by step figure out if this is the right solution for you? You know, that's the beginning of your close. Um, and if you don't like close, you can call it enrollment, whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're not, it's not, we're not selling cars here. We're not trying to um, make it, you know, sound crass by any stretch of the imagination. That's just a general term. So hopefully that, you know, doesn't kind of throw you off. But the point being in this transition, if you practice it, and I would write it out, you know, so that it makes sense for your talk, I would practice it a ton. And I would, and when you do give your talks, I would video them, right? If you're going to, if you're going to go through all the time, effort, and energy of putting together these dinner talks, and you want to make them an ongoing, um, strong source of new patients for your office. I mean, um, do everything in your power to make each one better than the last, okay? And then finally, hey, just have fun. Know that you're changing lives. Um, I really enjoy public speaking. Um, I built my neuropathy practice with dinner talks in the beginning. Um, after that, we went into pretty in extensive advertising. But in the beginning, you know, uh, inserts. Um, I use newspaper inserts as the primary source and uh, just filled rooms and just, you know, did this. And I, you know, all of the stuff that I talk about in, in the perfect workshop system and, and all this, you know, all my training is, you know, um, you know, most of it was learned just from, you know, trial and error. But then, you know, I was studying all, all the other um, people that talked about these um, subjects as well, you know, stuff like, you know, are people like um, Brian Tracy, Jordan Belfort, um, Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins. I mean, all these guys talk about, you know, presentation and persuasion and speaking and all this type of stuff. And so um, you can just take all this information and, uh, you know, just again, just continue to hone it into a point where um, you just feel super comfortable and um, you should, you know, in terms of conversion, I always look at, you should, you should be at the 50-50. I like the 50-50 mark where 50% um, of the people in the audience are going to make a paid appointment and then 50% of those are going to sign up for care. So if you had 40 people in the audience, 20 people are going to make a paid appointment, which means that, you know, 95% of them are going to actually show and then you close half or you enroll half, right? So 40 people showed, 20 people made paid appointments, 10 enrolled. So if you could do that one time a month 
and your care plans are fifty or five thousand dollars, and you know you're in that one campaign that you do every single month, you can get ten new patients. You know, so that's how the numbers work, and they work really well. And so that's why it's really worth dissecting these different aspects of the talk, so that you know you just know, okay, my content's rock star. Okay, um, Q and A. Well, maybe I should start addressing some of the um, the big the elephants in the room. I always recommend this to clients. Hey, man, tell them that insurance doesn't cover it, and then give a really good explanation. You know, it's like, hey, so now I want to open up the floor for Q and A, but you know, before I do that, I always get two big questions. You know, does insurance cover it, and how much is it? I always would do. I would always tell them, insurance doesn't cover this. And, and then I would go, you know, have a detailed explanation of why. That way, someone doesn't throw a curveball and I don't have a prepared answer. Um, but, you know, you just break up your talk like this and you just continue to hone each one. And, um, um, uh, you know, and you just get better and better. And then pretty soon you can just have one, you know, of many, right? I never recommend having just one source of new patients, but you can have a really strong one that you get out um, into your community. You know, it's just once a month, so you're not gonna burn through, you know, Facebook or TV or anything like that, or inserts, whatever you're doing for to generate, you know, um, uh, uh, attendees there. If you do it just once a month, you're not gonna burn through, uh, unless you have, you know, a really small town. But by and large, once a month is kind of the money spot, and you can get a, you know, put all time, effort, energy with the clinic um, and the staff to really make it great. And then um, and then you're just rocking and rolling for the next two weeks in consults. So, okay, I'm Dr. Vince. I hope this was helpful for you. And um, if you have any questions, you can just, uh, you know, leave them in the comments below or shoot me an email, Dr. Vince at drvinceleone.com. Take care.